Hello everyone, this is Zach from the Massachusetts Independent Comics Expo. We just wrapped on our month of mice, four weeks of virtual comics programming that was free to attend for everybody. And we got a lot of positive feedback about our production. Uh, and since I'm the one who produced it all, it really makes sense for me to put together some guides on how I did it. And so other uh, independent artists and events can, you know, take pieces of it and use it for their own video recordings or streams. So let's get started. All right, to give you an idea of what we did to run the month of mice, you sort of need to know um, about OBS. <clears throat> OBS is, it stands for Open Broadcaster Software. It's a free to download, open source, community driven application that's been around for a very long time that's very, very heavily used in the video game streaming, um, uh, like Twitch world for um, live streaming and even recordings. It's, it's a really powerful tool that lets you stitch together different media live video audio sources into different scenes and then stream those or record those or both at the same time as you see fit so this is basically the backbone of how mice ran its production um we streamed to a platform called crowdcast um crowdcast it has a lot of features but essentially it accepted rtpm which is the kind of output that obs gives you and it's the same kind of output that, you know, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, or um, Twitch would accept. So it's sort of the same thing. We just had to plug the right values into the right places, and you're good to go. Um, but let me give, give you an overview of what this looks like. So right now I have a very basic scene set up. Um, but to get started, you want to download OBS. And to go download, you just want to go to obsproject.com. It's available for pretty much every major... Uh, OS that you want to use. I will say that I, my preference is to use this on Windows, and that's because it is, it was built originally to run on Windows. It is the most powerful on Windows, in my opinion. Uh, it runs fine on Mac OS. There are a couple features that don't quite work as well due to later versions of Mac OS's um, internal security and and sort of the fact that the great majority of streamers and people who use OBS skew towards Windows. Windows gets more support um, just by nature of who's working, who has eyes on it. It works on on Mac just no problem, though since OBS tends to be CPU or graphics card um, dependent, Macs are a little weaker in the, the graphics card department for the most part, unless you have like one of the newer Mac Pros. If you're on a MacBook Pro or an iMac, you, you're probably okay, but just know that depending on what you want to stream, it's uh it's gonna be a little difficult if you're streaming Photoshop not so hard if you're trying to stream like a like a bunch of Zoom calls thrown together or or you know, trying to do the production that we were doing it it's not gonna go so great like I I personally have a pretty beef gaming computer because that's what I like to do on my downtime um so we we were set up in the best possible way with the hardware required to really push our production to the limit on what was available for free once you download that um. You have OBS. It doesn't look like this. I, I set up a, a quick scene. Um, it normally would look like that, just a black screen. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to sort of walk you through what could be useful for you as, let's say, you're an artist who wants to stream to Twitch. What does that look like? How, how can you get that set up? I'm not going to show you the Twitch side. That's on you to figure out. Um, I'm just sort of going to show you how you would set up in OBS. Let's make a new scene. I have a bunch of scenes here I'll show you in a second, but make a new scene. Let's just say it's going to call this art stream. New scene. Black screen. Nothing going on. You got scenes here. You got sources. You got an audio mixer. Like, oh, this is a lot. This is confusing. It's not so hard. It's all layers. So essentially, your scenes here are, think of them like your finished product going out the door. So you have, this is where you can build um, different objects that basically different, different views the stream will have. And I can show you what that looks like in your sources, build those views. So let's say here, I want to rename this to, you know, intro or like artist intro. Let's say you want your stream to have like an introduction for yourself where you are the primary subject. Um, and your art stream is like secondary. So let's say I, and okay. So I have this blank canvas. Um, I can go here and I have a whole bunch of options. 
for what I can input or output. So um, let's say you want to be heard. That's really important. So you have an audio input capture that this is what you want to do. Like if you have a microphone plugged in the audio input capture, and you have the option, let's say I want artist microphone or my microphone, whatever you, whatever you want to name. You can name it nothing if you want you can leave it this this audio capture device or whatever the default is, but you can name it whatever you want. Press OK, and then you get this screen and you have a bunch of options. I have a bunch of uh, microphones plugged in. This is my main microphone, the Audio Technica 2020 for work. And I'm going to use that. Press OK. And if you see here now loaded in, I can adjust the gain. I can mute it. Um, I can even do some stuff like this. I can add filters to it and whatnot. But now my microphone is added. So if I start recording or start streaming, my microphone will be heard by the stream. Um, this was important actually for mice because there were multiple times where I wasn't to be heard because I was just producing. So we purposely didn't add my microphone, which was doable because of the methodology we utilized to set up our production. Okay, next. Cool. You got your audio, but what about you? You need you need to be seen. So let's pick your video. So let's say you have a webcam plugged in. Um, so I have a video capture device. That would be the, the thing to use for webcams. Video capture device. Let's just say artist webcam. And uh, that's a little tease, but I have two webcams plugged in right now. So my Brio, which is a Logitech um, webcam. There we go. There's me. It's me. Um... You have a bunch of options here. It's pretty, it's pretty feature full. You really don't need to do too much here if you don't want to. One thing I would check, um, this might just be the nature of how my settings are right now, but if you don't like this cropping, this is what appears to be four three right ratio. Let's say you wanted to change your resolution. I'm gonna make this a 1920 by 1080, which is what something the Brio can do. Press okay. And it fills the whole screen because um, the Brio is 1080 and I have, you should probably set your uh your 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 uh scene size to 1080 as well because i don't think you'll be you certainly won't be streaming past 1080 in fact when you start with twitch before your affiliate or whatever you can't stream past 720. um other rtbm solutions that allow you to pass, stream past that you usually have to pay for it um and you could record to 4K, but if you don't have devices that are sending in 4K, it's not really worth it. Um, this is taking up the whole scene. Um, the nice thing is now that this is here, I can move it around. So if I just grab it, I can just whoop, wiggle it around. It's making me a little sick. Um, and it is a little sticky to the sides. So you can sort of stick them in the corners. Uh, you can do, you can, you can sort of just shrink it like so. I'm very small now. Look at me. I'm tiny. That's what I want it to be. I'm back. Uh, you can also crop. So if you were to hold Alt on Windows to figure it out for Mac, but it's one of those, it's probably Alt or Option, um, and start pulling to so the green green sides show me that I'm cropping. I'm a half man now. Half man. Um, you can see my shoes. Comics. See the art print I need to give to a, give to a friend. Um, but you can crop stuff. This was super helpful for us for the, for the way we did the mice. Um, production because um i'll show you in a second how that worked but we we did a lot we basically use zoom to to bring in all of our panelists moderators workshop um facilitators etc and then i cropped i grabbed the uh, display captures and cropped them all in and that was uh a, a bit stressful to do in 30 minutes for like eight people but it worked it totally worked um you can also you can lock things so i'd say i don't, don't want to actually move it now i can't move it um unlock it i can move it again so let's make me like most of the screen uh there's some options here there's a whole bunch of options here the most important one is probably transform um you know i can rotate myself 180 and that's just terrifying um i can rotate myself back um reset transform will just reset the original size i make myself smaller again and i go to transform and center the screen. Boom. I'm in the middle of the screen. Great. Fantastic. That's what I want. Okay, cool. This is me. But let's say I want to also tease. Um, I want to tease the art stream that I'm going to have open. So I open it at a new source. Let's in, let's say in this case, which I do, I have a second webcam, which I do uh, attached to that's behind me. You can kind of see it right there. 
it's attached to my little shelf on the wall underneath the little uh Tokyo Tower from the Lego set. Um and let's say I have workspace webcam. And this is the other this is the other webcam. This is the Logitech uh C930 older webcam, but it works great. The last streamers use it. And I'm also gonna make this a 1920 by 1080, because that's the original size. But you see a lot of crap on the sides. Um I just moved Okay, it's been two months, so it's not really just moved, but I just moved. Um, so there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot I need to, I need to figure out. So my desk is pretty messy back there. Um, but this is gonna be my workspace. Let's say I'm, for me at least, this might be where I'm like gonna build a Gundam. Um, I have a bunch of kits directly underneath this webcam you can't see. And sort of my treat post mass mice, mass mice, <laughs> month of mice was to build some, some Gundam models. Um, uh, so yeah, here's my art stream, and it's uh, it's kind of messy. I don't want everyone to see everything, so I'm gonna just hit Alt and whoop, bring that in, and whoop, bring that in. You can't see most. Oopsies. Center this. You just put that over there. So now you got a nice little overlay. I'm saying hello to the stream. The if you're just starting, it's probably gonna be like. Two people and they're both your friends and they'll keep it open, keep the 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 tab open for maybe half hour until they forget to close it because you know you're sort of talking to no one. That's fine. I've done it before. It's a lot of fun. Um, lock them up. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, let's say you want a fancy background. Um, well, good for me. I have some of the the backgrounds that we use for the mice stream. So let's go grab a. So I grabbed, actually, I'll let me explain it. I grabbed an image source. So you can grab just any, whatever image. This can be animated too. So you can put a GIF um, in the background. That's what a lot of um, fancy streams do. They basically build, they get a uh, a background animation made. It's either a looping video or a looping GIF. It's just like sort of like the nice, weird, um, abstract shapes moving in the background thing. And it's on a 20 second loop. And they just stick that in the background. And it looks like a, they got like a dynamic newsroom sports event, Olympics, whatever production style thing. It's just a looping video. It's great. Um, but, and that if you do video, that'd be a, a media source, but yeah, let's do image. Grab an image. Let's say this is the mice background. Cause that's what it's, it's going to be. And you get options. So I'm going to go browse for this image. Um, I was already here earlier. So the, <laughs> the mice folder. So stream assets, master background. Let's grab this one. This is the one we use for panels. It's nice and sort of in the background, but also it's in the foreground. That sucks. What do we do about that? Um, super easy. So you see this order right here? It's in a list. You can just drag it down and now it's at the bottom because it's showing you the layer order um, of what you're working on. Audio, obviously less of an issue. It's just gonna mix audio. So if you put in multiple sources, it'll just mix them together. Um, and that's really useful if you're like running like Discord kind of thing. <laughs> um, because you can you can capture specific, you can capture like computer audio and stuff like that. But yeah, this is a very simple setup. You have your workspace, you got your video, and you got a background. It's super simple. This is basically the foundational stuff. Like all those fancy streams you see with like overlays and stuff like that. Those are items that are are built and can be piped into OBS either through browser sources or images locally on your computer, and you can just load them in. Um, all those fancy scene transitions are just videos have been loaded into trans the transition menu like this is the backbone is layering image video and audio into a scene that you can stream or record super easy okay cool so you got your intro this is your first scene but you want to have like the art primary scene and obviously you don't want to be streaming and then start like moving this stuff around oh god <laughs> somebody want to lock your background you don't want to be like, you know, in your stream, like, oh, let me just, uh, oh yeah. So now we're going to move to the art. So I'm going to do this and then, oh, oh shoot. Um, oh, let me grab that and go there. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. So, um, that, you know, it's, it's time consuming for you. It's stressful because you suddenly, you're suddenly feel like you're on the clock. Like, oh, I gotta get this right. Oh no, this sucks. Um, and everyone's like, what is this person doing? This is ridiculous. Why would you do that? Um, and here's what you can do. So I'm going to make a new scene and this is going to be, you know, workspace primary, whatever. I don't know. I just name shit. Cool. Back to this. Oh no, it's all dark. Uh, fun thing. You can grab that 
plug it in. Now your audio is captured again. You want to move your audio every time. Otherwise, when you move between scenes, you're going to not be heard. Copy the background in. Uh, something to note, if you capture multiple things at once, let's say I grab both of these and copy and then paste. They show up weird. They don't always show up in the exact same format that you want or in the exact same location. If you grab them one at a certain moment, this is why you lock your backgrounds. Um, so if I were to delete these out of the scene, go here and grab just the artist webcam and move it. Now it moves in the exact same place. Um, but I don't want that. Let's say I want to, I want this to be, go somewhere else. So I like, ooh, make it a little smaller, put it over here oop, and go grab my webcam. At like the big deal. This is what people are here for. I can, if I want, me to overlap it. Boop. Now I overlapped it. Now, this is my webcam. This is where my art stuff is. This is where the Gundams are going to get built or whatever. Because I'm not a like comic artist. I'm a producer, writer, event organizer. Um, maybe publisher. Get back to me on that. Um, yeah, this was the foundation of how Month of Mice was produced. We would capture different sources, throw them in here, and bada bing, bada boom, we were done. Um, now, this is where things get interesting. So not everybody has two webcams. What a lot of people have is maybe a laptop or iMac that has a built-in webcam, which is great. Super, super nice. Um Pro tip on the laptop, um, if you're streaming or like on a video call, prop that dude up on a laptop stand or just some books. If you I know you have books, just put them on some books. Um, but don't cover that back vent. Let that back vent breathe. Um, so the webcam is at natural eye height. So it looks like you're talking to someone instead of you're looking down and it casts you in shadow and it's a whole mess. Prop that dude up. Anyway, um, those are really great. Um, uh, but then you don't have a second camera. Or your workspace, if you're working traditionally, that is, of course. <clears throat> if you're working traditionally, which, you know, I'm a huge fan of, especially for live drawing, um, what do you do? We found an answer for that. That was a big question for us, because we had a lot of workshop people who were like, I don't have a second camera, I want to work traditionally, or we were working on drink and draws, where, you know, we were having three to four live draws at once, and they're like, oh, what if I just share my screen through Zoom, because we were capturing through Zoom? Like, that's not going to work, because we have four people at once we can't have them constantly resharing that that's just a mess um and they're like oh we can draw and like show on a webcam like yeah that's great but like you know some people have older webcams and it doesn't it really doesn't look that good we saw a lot of that during during month of mice like where people's heads were okay looking at least they sounded good but they, they weren't fantastic like we were they were coming in at 720p maybe even 540p and that's really low at this point like it doesn't look so good so it's like, what can we do? I'm like, everyone, almost everyone's got a phone. You know, the phone, this is tough. You're already kind of uh, starting from, from below the surface. So I apologize for that. But yeah, you need a phone for this part. So let me show you how you would, you know, use a phone um, to, get, to get this done. So what we found is there is a website called OBS Ninja. And this was something I discovered. And what OBS Ninja allows you to do, follow along with me, because it might seem complicated at first, but it, I got everybody to use it, and it worked great. Um, even everybody who was like, oh, I can't do tech stuff. Like, you can. Just listen to me, and you'll be fine. Um, OBS basically allows you through your browser. I truly recommend Chrome for this. We saw some, some difficulty with Safari um, because of... Uh, Max Mac OS's security features, which are really important and useful, do cause limitations with things like this. So OBS Ninja on a browser, so a full, you know, computer browser, the desktop browser, that gives you a lot of options. We did not use the group chat. We didn't use re reusable links. We didn't get into that situation. We used the remote screen share or the add your camera. Essentially what this does is allows you, I'm going to do the remote screen share, to grab a screen let's say it allows you to grab an entire display as you see i have three displays plugged in which ended up being really helpful for the entire production of month of mice i could have done it with two three was very helpful um 
application window, uh, or Chrome tab, which is actually really handy. Um, but let's, for this case, let's say I'm just going to capture, um, <laughs> what should I capture? I'll capture Photoshop, uh, just for the, for the sake of, of showing how this works. Grab it, share it, and that's fine. No audio source detected. I don't want to send an audio source. Oop. And now what I've gotten is this screen. This screen basically says, oh, you're sharing Photoshop. Here's Photoshop. Um, here's a bunch of other stuff. You can, you can end it. You can uh, change some settings. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you can disable the camera or you can um, disable the microphone. This is a really important one, actually. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. But no audio source is actually sent, so it doesn't matter. Um, but you get this green link up here, and this is really, really. So I'm going to copy that. You, just, you copy it by clicking on it. It knows what it wants. Go to OBS, and let's say you... Let's say you want to share Photoshop this methodology, which doesn't make sense, but we're getting there. We're getting there. I'll show you. Let's just get rid of this source for a second and add a browser. This is a browser source. Browser, let's say Chrome Photoshop. Ooh, I can spell and copy that in. So now it's the HTTPS colon slash slash OBS dot ninja slash question mark view equals this key. Um, this key was so helpful to us because basically all that's all I needed from the artists uh, who were joining in the call or who were sending me a live stream of their stuff. Um, it is cap sensitive. This is because this is not just a URL. It's a key telling the obs.ninja like client that this is the key it needs to see that's cap sensitive. Um, then we have the actual, you know, dimensions. I'm going to choose... 20 or 2080 by 720 good useful size um i don't need 1920 by 1080 because i'm gonna make it smaller that's okay and boom there's my photoshop uh weird i don't know why would you do it this way um this is you know not the smartest way to do it when you're capturing a, a application that's on the same computer you're running obs on that doesn't make any sense but if you're capturing photoshop on somebody else's computer or if you're capturing four photoshops from four different computers this rules this is so useful um but let me show you what i mean with the phone so i'm gonna leave this here i'll just change the url so i'm gonna take my phone right here it's my phone it's an android phone I'm gonna lock it I'm gonna go to chrome i'm gonna go to obs.ninja if i figure out a way how to nicely capture video on my phone i haven't looked into it yet i'm sure it's pretty i will put this into the video. All right, so we are looking at OBS Ninja. There's the add your camera to OBS. I'm gonna click that. And I get, I see the front facing, I see a bunch of different camera options. Um, you typically wanna use the back cameras because they're nicer. There are two different options. One is usually a little more telescope than the other. Um, pick whatever makes sense. Open audio sources, uh, remove, hit no audio just in case. If you don't have that option, it's okay. You can mute it before, after you start it. And uh, yeah, you get a view of my room. There's my room with a bunch of prints. Um, I'm gonna open window and my desk set up. And I hit start. Okay, cool, well, hit start, this is what you see. And, uh, oop, I turn it, I shouldn't do that. Um, and at the top you see, oh yeah, I'm gonna turn on uh, the ability to move. And there I go, now I'm in horizontal view, which is great, good for wider setups. And then at the top, you see the link, the share link, that the view link, that's really important. That's what you'll need to throw into OBS. Um, watch out for that. And then at the bottom is the mute button, that little button right there. So hit that to mute um, so you don't get audio being sent via your OBS, uh, OBS Ninja stream into OBS because you're already capturing audio from your microphone. So I see my URL. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. So I'm going to change the settings on this on this chrome browser i have here um because it's not photoshop anymore i'll change the name in a second i'll just grab that and change it so it's m uppercase y d this isn't going to work when you see this video because i'm going to turn off obs ninja on my phone before i publish this so you won't be able to see anything you won't get like a weird sneak peek into my room you weirdo um <laughs> okay ea that should be right and make sure it actually shows you something. That's okay. And boom, look at that. You get a whole view of what's going on in my room. More importantly, you can get a view 
of a work surface. You can, you know, set it up with like a tripod, like this guy over here. Um, and you can work. Um, I will say one issue with this is, um, we've seen issues with, um, what's it called? Um, focus, auto focusing. Sometimes it'll auto focus something too close or too far. Easiest thing, if it, if it's not capturing you, the art you wanted to capture, just like put your hand here and just slowly lower it down, then leave it. It'll it'll figure it'll sort of stick there for a while until something catches it again. Um, it worked really well for us. This was sort of our bread and butter of getting the artist to use their phone or iPad or some other device to run OBS Ninja on their traditional art, and then, um, you know, masking taping it or putting it on a bunch of books and then putting another book on top of that the the phone so the 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 camera is still coming out um yeah whatever clues you way worked and then sending us the 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 link and we got a remote um you know uh capture of their workspace and that was so incredibly helpful so this is a really easy way in my opinion to handle uh traditional workspaces if you want to capture it for your for your streams or your recordings um and sort of stitch it together in a slightly more professional uh looking environment um that's a really good option there are other things you can do there, there are programs that let you stream other like you can buy you can buy an app for your phone that lets you stream the app this sort of similar way but this is a free tool that was very reliable and never failed on us um and i highly recommend it um now let's it, say you were going to be doing something more traditional like oh i want to you know record photoshop or whatever or like clip studio paint or whatever i'm working on um you can just go to here and you can choose window capture now window capture basically looks for windows or you know application windows you already have open so this could be uh chrome tabs that you have separated or just a chrome window with a bunch of tabs this can be a game um although game capture is its own thing i'm not gonna i'm not, I'm not gonna discuss that here uh, but window capture is basically how you can capture that. So go window capture. Let's say I want this to be my Photoshop. That's not what I want. Um, I want Photoshop. So here it is. There's Photoshop. I can have it capture or not capture the ca the cursor. In this case, I do want it to capture the cursor. Um, and yeah, press OK. I can shrink this puppy down a little bit. Boop, boop. And now, oop, pardon me, here. Now, if I work in Photoshop, let's say I go to new. Go create. And now I can create a little thing in Photoshop. I'm actually going to do anything in Photoshop. I mostly use it for assets. Hello, this is the mice font. It's called Savu. We like it a lot. Cool. Yeah, now you have Photoshop running. Um, I have, you know, not in a friendly way left this. Oop, there we go. That's better. Um, but now you get the idea. It's it's sort of you can sort of stack things together, you can move things around, um, you can transition back and forth. So if I go back to intro, you get a little fade in, fade out. You can change these transitions, so it could be like uh, a fade or a wipe or whatever you know fancy film transition you want to find people have made tons of these you can hire somebody to make custom ones for you it's this whole ecosystem out there. uh people who are building and things to support streamers and artists and stuff like that it's really interesting uh not something i'm going to dive too far into i don't know it that well i just know it exists and it's not expensive um or you can just learn how to do it for yourself because you know I'm, i am speaking to artists so this is something you want to dive into for yourself you probably can, and you can probably learn how to. It's once you learn the foundational tools that exist for you, um, the world is your oyster. So that was the section where I'd say, like, this is the part to help artists. This is the part to help individual people who want to stream their own shit um, and get it out into the world on Twitch. You can just record it and put it on YouTube. You can just stream this to YouTube Live. You can stream to Facebook. You can use tools like Restream, which allow you to stream to multiple things at once. The, the huge benefit we found with Crowdcast was that Crowdcast allows us to stream simultaneously 
to other sources or other uh, platforms. And we opted to use Facebook Live because we have a Facebook page for mice, but also Facebook was the only one that had automatic closed captioning features built in. And they wanted to have that, that slight accessibility feature uh, available to our, um, to our audience, uh, full well knowing that trying to inject um, closed captions, because there, that is, there are things you can do with OBS, so like send your audio to a browser, like to a browser tool that generates, automatically generates like um, closed captioning and put in sticks and you can put that into OBS. It's very difficult. It's very time consuming to set up. Um, it's not the most reliable, depending on what you want. Um, it is more delayed than you'd like. Um, and also it's another visual component to contend with trying to figure out where everything's going to go. Um, so we opted to just have a secondary stream that just did it for us. And it worked great. Um, worked really, really well. Uh, so that was essentially, that's the foundation. So now if you're interested in the bread and butter of how we did this, I'm going to walk through building the actual like scene for mice. Let's say I'm I'm building a panel. It's not going to be full because I don't have a I don't have a call <laughs> with like five people, but you have to sort of play along with me on this one. So I'm gonna stop using this scene. So you see I have a bunch of uh, scenes here. I sort of kept them week by week because I would sort of up update them and add, 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 um, edit them as each week sort of came came towards us. I'm gonna go through two different kinds. One was a very, oh, three different kinds. I go through the, the panels because the panels are pretty straightforward. Then I'll go through a workshop, which were not more complicated, but different. And then I'm going to talk about Iron Cartoonist because Iron Cartoonist was the most complicated by a landslide. Um, but it shows you the power of what OBS can provide you. And this was all basically done for free. Like Zoom isn't a free tool. We <laughs> use the Zoom license I have through my day job. Um, but you could have done this with Google Meet, um, which is free, um, or some other video chat service. The one benefit of Zoom, really, is that since it's an application, not a browser-based tool, it's a little more efficient when it comes to video chat, and it, it tends to utilize people's network bandwidth better because it can essentially have its own algorithm around network usage, whereas a browser-based tool like Google Meet um, is sort of dependent on Chrome to facilitate that. Um, additionally, uh, Zoom allows you to do this thing called use dual monitors, which was hugely helpful to us. And essentially what that does is it separates the screen share. There's a, it's one window for a screen share and then another window for the call itself. So if we were doing, if the workshop facilitator was using the Zoom screen share for uh to share their screens for instance with storyboarding for andy um pardon me for andy he was sharing his screen um and that uh that was um he was sharing like photoshop and a pdf he had built on his screen uh, i could capture it very easily throw that into into obs and it was it wouldn't interrupt anything else I was doing. Like him sharing or unsharing wouldn't change the zoom window. I'll explain in a second why that's really important. Uh, because uh, as, as any, anyone who was with me on this ride will tell you, uh, I, I was very precise and kind of demanding about how people needed to um, work with me when it came to, uh, oops, pardon me. Stop sharing. There we go. Let me do that. Apologies. Um, I was very demanding on what people's behavior in Zoom would be because if certain things happened, the entire visual of our production would sort of go askew in a way that was very unprofessional. So I, I, I was very specific on how behavior should be done to keep that in line, and it worked really well. Um. Again, this is diving into the weeds. I don't. I can't foresee any artists really wanting to do this, do this unless they want to start some kind of series where they're like interviewing people or bringing other people's art on. They want to have like a nice visual overlay that fits in specific ways. This is kind of how you do that. Um, and you know, you can use other tools. You don't need to be Zoom. It can be Google Meet. It can be Discord. Discord is a video chat function. You can capture that and put it in. So 
there are lots of options, but let me show you what it looks like with Zoom. So I'm gonna go, you know, you know I'm, my video's gonna go away for a bit. And I'm just gonna be talking because I don't have my video built into these scenes. But let's talk about, let's do the, the middle school ones. This was um, creating graphic novels for middle school, middle grade readers. Pardon me, this is a great panel that we did um, last Saturday. Um, and this is how I built it. So essentially, I always ensured to have a buffer intro slides. This is basically when the stream started, there was just an image, no video, no audio. This essentially allowed me one to prep the audience like, oh, cool, it's starting. Like we know it's happening. It doesn't go, it doesn't kick right in. We have like a minute buffer. And the reason, one of the other reasons I put this in is because it's like a 20, 30 second delay between me from what's happening in OBS to what the stream actually sees. So. I wanted to confirm the stream looked good. So I, I got analytics and metrics back from Crowdcast of um, the upload rate. So there's a, it's called bit rate, but essentially the rate in which data is being received and sent, I wanted to make sure they matched um, and to make sure the stream was live. So once the stream was live, I counted down into the mice intro. This is, you know, not capturing what you want to see right now. But um, essentially what would happen here is I can rebuild this. Go here, then. Pardon me. I know this is this is not the most professional thing, but I'm I'm just sort of winging this. Um, we had a slide deck. Um, oh, there it is. Perfect. That's great. Um, so basically, we had a, a Google slide deck that was our intro. I'll show what it looks like. Like this. Oop. This is a slide deck. You know. Uh, we actually ended up putting Colleen's slides in here too, and I ran those. But um, yeah, so the slide deck, slide deck looks like we had a you know the intro page, which and we had a, a mice staff person. In this case, it was Ed uh, Ed Shems. Uh, he would introduce the panel, then introduce the sponsor, then the arts advocates, explain what the Boston Comics Arts Foundation, which is our um, which is basically the organization that we belong to, which produces mice. It's the BCAF is the 501c3 we belong to. Um, and then the fact that we have closed captioning and also how Crowdcast works and then blah, 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 blah. So that was that. That's how that worked. Change this. Image of slides. That, there we go. So essentially what would happen is Colleen's video was here. Ed's video was here. I'll show you how I did that in a second. Um, and this was the intro slides. So as Ed would introduce things, I, I knew the script pretty, I knew the, the formula for the script very well at this point. And he'd be like, welcome to mice, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, sponsored by graphics. And I would change it um, on my end. Basically what's happening here is I have not, um, this is kind of tricky. I, this is not a full screen share. This is a cropped share of the full browser display. So as you can see here, what I was doing is I was moving it as Ed was talking. Because what happens if you go full screen is you get that little bar down, here, bar at the bottom down here. That's like that shows that's like the the presentation menu for Google Slides. And I didn't want that because it would visually show up. I want it to be a little more seamless. So I just cropped this dude in like so, pulled it over, and it's like thank you for graphics, and then like oh like you know thank you to our arts advocates. Mice is sponsored by BCAF, if you have questions, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, we went into Colleen's thing and just ran through it. It was great. It worked really, really well. And this allowed me, like, you know, this allowed me the different options of, um, let's say, we were, the, the panelists were talking about um, Shannon's book. They want to talk about, oh, her character design. Like, boom, character design. We can pull that up. And I didn't have to, like quickly tab back and forth between slides, I can just scroll on the side, which you can't see in the stream and pick, select the right um, slide and just show it without anyone knowing how I, how I pulled it out. It was just instant. Um, so that was really great. So this was the intro scene. Um, then I had the panel slides, which is basically the same thing, except this also included all of the panelists and Colleen in their own video captures. And I know this looks really ugly, but it's because these are display captures capturing parts of my screen over here. I know it's very messy looking. I'll explain. I'll show you, I'll show you how this how this actually came together in a second. 
Um, so this was one of the scenes. So when they were talking about art or doing the introduction that Colleen was running with the, with the slides, I would stay on this scene. But then we moved to just conversation. I would move to this one where it was all five of them in equal larger videos, and that's the whole thing. And basically throughout the panel, dependent on the conversation, I would move back and forth between these two scenes and this would live up this basically will update the in 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 the uh in the stream as well so what went into these these scenes so let's go back to the intro as you see i have a whole bunch of different sources set up and i'll explain what they are one by one i'll start from the bottom the bottom is the mice background it's the background same idea it's locked so i can't move it then we have the mice logo this is some, the, all of the all of these assets by the way were built by shilly paraline who is a co-director and co-founder of mice she is also the artistic backbone to to mice. She basically, she and her husband Brayden, really are the ones who put all the assets together and create the visual language for mice, which is was hugely helpful and a different kind of demanding for this this event, as opposed to our live events. Pardon me, I need a drink. So yeah, then we had the the logo that she made, and then, um. Here's a month of mice hashtag that we utilize. We just want to let there the whole time. Not people, people didn't really use it, and that's okay. Um, I used it. That's what's important. Then a really important one: computer sound. Now, this, as you can see, I'm talking and nothing's showing up over here. And the reason for that is because we were capturing the sound my computer would output. And this is how we captured sound from the Zoom call. So as you can sort of now like well, work with me here on this one. Zoom or any video chat service, when you hear audio on your computer, that is computer sound. That is sound the computer would be playing to you. And this is kind of the weird producer side of things where I could capture computer sound, which would capture any sound being played by my computer, which means I had to be careful about other windows I had open, anything that might play sound on my computer. Otherwise, so I couldn't, you know, for instance, I couldn't monitor the stream. I chose not to monitor the stream um, through Crowdcast or our Facebook Live while the stream was running. I, there are tricky ways to separate out your audio sources so that my computer, uh, OBS, is only capturing audio from a specific device, and I could use the other device to check in on those streams. I didn't want to risk it. I didn't want too many complicated moving parts. I knew that there were some events I was going to be taking part in, so I didn't want to go too far. But... What this allows us to do is, and this would be the case for Discord or you know Google Google Meet as well, is the one source left out of just selecting computer sound is you, me, the person who's producing it, because my microphone is sending audio to Zoom, not receiving it from Zoom or from Google Hangouts or from Discord, which means I got to be a producer voice. If I wanted my voice to be heard, I would have to manually add my microphone by going here, going to audio input capture, audio input capture, and then choosing my microphone. That's how that would happen. So now if I do that. Now you see it. There it is. Boom. Yeah, audio input capture is the one I just added. I'm going to remove it because I didn't need that. But that was a really sort of crafty thing we realized was I can count, let's say I, I can count Ed in, I can go from like, okay, we're, we're live three, two, one, Ed live, go here. And the stream wouldn't pick up like that last cutoff, like the last half of me saying live. It would just pick up the first thing Ed says. So it just adds like a little bit of cleaner production to it. Um, also means if there was a, you know, a technical issue, which we ran into very few that very few. Uh, we did run into one that was my fault, and I'll get into that in a second. <laughs> um, and we actually, Shelly, did create a beautiful, a really cute technical difficulty slide, which we rarely use. We use it as a joke once. Um, but um, that means I could continue talking. Or if it's, say, like, you know, someone's like, oh, like, let's go to the slides. And I'm like, we're at slides. They wouldn't, the audience wouldn't hear that. The call would, which is great, and but the audience wouldn't, um, which means I could sort of give feedback to our panelists or our workshop facilitators or whomever as needed. Um, they just had to be reminded not to respond to me because then it would be weird that they were talking to, they were having a one-sided conversation. So I tried to limit my uh, my input to the absolute tiniest as, as needed. Okay, 
So that was audio. Then we had the Chrome. This is a this is a, a this is a window capture. So if you see here, to do this is just a window capture capturing a Chrome tab, which I showed you earlier, uh, which is this slideshow. Um, then I have text. You can add text. So this is Ed's text um, and Colleen's text. What's really nice is it uses all your system fonts. So if you have a bunch of fancy fonts installed, it can render them and add them. So let me just show you what that looks like. So this is Ed. Uh, Montserrat is one of the is like the the web friendly font that that um, we use for mice. So that was what we use for all of these um, user name fonts. Um, select font, Montserrat, regular, whatever. You can you know have your options, and you can even change. The color of the font, you can add a uh, background with opacity, so you can sort of give opacity here. You can change alignments to the, it, it, you know, if you work with text in Photoshop or any other kind of graphic tool, same idea. Um, there's a lot of options. Um, and Colleen's, and then these were the display captures. Now, what do I mean when I say display capture? Um, so I will show you in a second. So I'm going to actually launch Zoom really quickly just to give you an idea what this looks like. I'm going to... Start a new meeting here. Here we go. Okay, so I am. Yes, I know. Okay, I'm just gonna send audio so it doesn't. All right, so I am in a Zoom call. You can't see it yet, but I'll show you in a second. Uh, I have a virtual background of Paranormans. So that's what we're gonna get. Um, let me just. Here's what I'm, gonna do. I'm actually gonna get rid of uh, Ed and Colleen's videos. Boop. There they go. I'm going to do a new display capture. Uh, display capture, here we go. I'm going to say zoom Zach. As you can see, it remembers all the ones I've already made, which I don't want to use. Um, boop. And as you can see, this is my very large 4K screen. One half is a zoom call, the other half is the other OBS. And since I'm using it to, to record this OBS, don't worry about it. It's how it works. Um, I don't want to capture this capture cursor because if I accidentally mouse over my face, during the panel, I don't want the mouse to be seen. So I'm going to get rid of that. So if I, and that's okay. Obviously it's huge. So I'm gonna make this smaller. Like, oh, there I am. Cool. There's me. I'm gonna make this even smaller. And then I'm gonna press alt and go bloop, 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 and just drag that puppy in and go in a little bit. Cause zoom likes to do that thing where it like does that like orange highlight box around whoever's talking. And we, I personally didn't like it. So I got rid of it. By just capturing in a little bit like that. And you can get really fine tuned with this. Like you can go into transform and like get really deep lost in the sauce with like exactly the number of pixels and size you want this to be. I kind of eyed it, frankly. In the future, I might get really, really specific about sizes and try to I might even build templates, like where I build background templates that have built in like black squares and rectangles for everything. Um, just so I don't have to, I don't have to think about it. I could just throw them in there and just transform them to the right size. We'll see if I do that um, in the future. So let me just lock this so I don't accidentally move it and go whoop and boop. There I am. There's me. So we would do this for every every person. We would do this for um, Ed and Colleen and all the panelists. Um, and there were a few tricks that we I, I picked up to make sure it never messed up, essentially. So I'll show you the tricks right now, typically by, um, what am I going to do? Mm, I'm going to get rid of this. This is where I'm, the winging it comes in. For this, I'm going to bring zoom over here. Boop, there it is. And then grab my menu. So this is a zoom menu. And this is get specific. This is like specifically about zoom working in this methodology. Google Meet Discord would work differently, and I haven't tested those, though the thought process is the same. So I'm going to go to the gear here. And one of the big ones that helped us was the dual monitors. I would have to restart the call for that to, for that to show up, uh, which I can do. In fact, I will do. So dual monitors, close that. I'm going to end this call and make a new one. What you get now. is now I have two windows. They show both show me, which is kind of concerning. But if someone were to screen share this window here that has no, you know, none of, the, none of these buttons, it's just, this window, I can even full screen this dude. Uh, so now it's full screened, which is awesome. If you're screen sharing, that's fantastic. 
um, is just view. It's just the it's just all stuff that you can capture. Um, let me just that smaller. Read this guy back. So that was hugely helpful. The next is pinning. So in Zoom, you can pin videos. Um, I don't think I can pin my own video because I don't have any other people on this call. But essentially, what pinning videos d does is it puts them. It makes them so they can't move, they can't leave. So even if someone turns off their video, which we did have somebody do, uh, because I think something happened in their apartment, they had to move to a different room mid mid panel. Uh, they turn the video off to the so people get like a weird shaky view of their apartment, uh, which ultimately is appreciated. Uh, they don't move because the thing about this capture is it's not capturing the application; it's capturing the monitor display. It's capturing what is being seen on that display. So I had to be super careful about what would happen. So there were little things people may have noticed at some point where I would like, you know, pull up my task manager and like, oh, oh shoot. Okay. I gotta get out of the way or something like, like, you know, it, it, <laughs> it, it happened a lot where I had to, I accidentally pulled something up and like, Ooh, get that out of the way right away. Or like windows does this thing where if you hold over a certain thing for too long, let's see, like, let's see if I can make it happen. Um, it sort of fizzles out. It like it, it windows is trying to help you by like, Oh, you're looking for a window. I'm going to, you know, uh, hide every window except for the one you're hovering over so you can find it. That's really helpful. And normally really, really, really annoying when you're trying to run this zoom or you're trying to run the stream because you don't want these windows to disappear because your um, because your stream OBS will capture that. It'll capture a sudden lack of windows in your display. And this was a little annoying because I had hoped originally, I'm going to move this stuff back to where I wanted it before. Um, I had originally hoped when I would, you know, do a capture for zoom, I would do a window capture, not a display capture. So I was hoping to grab a window capture where I would basically choose the zoom window and then just crop it into the way I wanted it. But when I do that, it doesn't work. There might be ways to make this happen. Um, as you can see, look at that. Okay, viewer. Um, this is how you make that work. You're, you're, you're watching me learn live. <laughs> live, because I'm going to put this video out. Okay, uh, redact everything I just said. Um, this probably works with Discord and Google Meet too. Uh, if you're on Windows 10 and you choose this, if you choose the Zoom window and you pick the Windows capture, Windows graphics capture, uh, capture method as opposed to the automatic capture method, uh, then it works just fine. Oh, that's great. Could have saved myself a lot of headache on that one. You might be asking, Zach, this looks like exactly the same thing. Why does it matter? Like, I'll tell you why it matters. It's because when you have like six video, six display captures going at the same time and you get finicky about moving them around, like you start shifting them around, uh, OBS might crash. Um, and it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, thankfully, it... I wouldn't fuss with them while it was live. So it never crashed during this, during a stream, except for one time where I tried to put something during a stream and it did crash. Um, that's on me. That's my fault. I have a feeling this would have been far less of an issue. And also if uh, I'm just going to test something really quickly, if I take a window and put it over the, yeah, it wouldn't. Oh man. Oh, you live and you learn. Ah, uh, it's a good thing we probably have to do something like this again next year, at least for a little bit. I don't think we're going to do a whole ass month. But, cool, now we all know. All right, let's take this back one more time. So how did I do this? Um, I use window capture. <laughs> so if I do it again, so I do window capture. Let's say I have a different panelist with me. I don't, but let's say Colleen's here. She's not. Um, all right. Zoom two. And... I choose a Zoom meeting. <laughs> and I choose the Windows graphics capture. I turn off capture cursor. I press OK. I can just pop this puppy down. 
Oh man. Press I'm pressing Alt to make this crop happen, by the way. And then whoop. Uh by the way, I'm not pressing shift when I use the corner. If you press shift and use a corner, um you can really make things nice and goofy. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be wide. Wide Zach here. This is pressing shift. Normally, if you just don't hold it, yeah, it'll just it'll keep the aspect ratio as you change it. Uh, this is this how the how by the way is how I would get things right. I would just make sure the width was the same and then eyeball it. Um, and as you can see, that maneuver I did, I'll just like just like shift us like throw stuff around. If I did that, there was like a thirty percent chance that OBS would crash on me. I have to close it and start again. Um, so it's good to know <laughs> that there is a way to prevent this. <laughs> Um, and that again, capture zoom. Oh man, I'm not even gonna edit this out. This is just gonna be me learning while you get to laugh at me because I'm assuming everyone's gonna see this as somebody who, at least to start with, somebody who I know. And I'm like, Zach, you dummy. Like, you're helping us so much, but damn, idiot. There we go. This is what's happening. Cool. So now we've learned something together. How delightful is that? Um, but yeah, that's really the bread and butter of how it was done. Then we go to. You know, then we, if we move through the rest of these these scenes, panel slides, again, this would be, well, now this would not be display capture. This would be window capture, which is way better. Um, all window capture. Who would have thunk it? That'd been amazing. And then we had the outro, which is just an image, the background, and then Ed outroing. And we had the oops. Let me show you what a workshop was like. So I can show you two different versions. Um, this was Andy uh, Restato. Um, who was doing um, storyboarding. We had the intro, Shelly and Andy were here, and we had the slide deck. Then Andy primary, uh, this was essentially, uh, again, a display capture, should have been a window capture for Zoom. Um, I'm gonna throw myself over here so you can see what I'm looking at. Oh God, see the, the cropping. This is what I mean by the display capture. This would have been a huge problem because of the display capture was capturing, is capturing my, my display and I'm in the wrong spot on my display. This is what would happen. Now I know that there's a better way Oh man, I'm I'm kind of busted up over that. That's just that that really sears my bacon. I don't normally say that. No, that's not something I say. And then over here we we had uh, his uh, Zoom capture, which was his workspace. It was uh, it was the screen share of his Photoshop and and slide deck. Then workspace and Andy, we did this thing where it was you know eighty percent his workspace and a little bit of Andy. So you got a, you know, you wouldn't have to squint because we, we recognize a lot of people were watching on laptops, 15, 13, 14 inch screens. We wanted to give the maximize the amount of workspace when people were talking about working. Um, photo booth was really interesting. This was a whole situation. Let me see if I can show you how we did this. So I'll bring this over here. Um, and what we would do is we create these photo booth. Let's see. Uh, let me pull the storyboard, storyboarding one. So what we did was, it was kind of complicated, but it worked really well. We had, we used Airtable for a lot of um, stuff from my, especially for our, we did our mini grants this year. We gave away 32 mini grants of $100 each to cartoonists across the world, um, making new comics to help with production. Um, normally my, we only give them, give away 10. And normally it's only to mice exhibitors ahead of the show so they can bring comics to the show. And so we were Holding a physical show, we opened up to everybody and found a matching sponsor to get to help us uh, up that number from ten to you know thirty two. Really, anyway. Um, so we use Airtable. So we had Airtable, and they have good nonprofit options. So again, Vice is run by BCAF. BCAF's a nonprofit. We had options there. This is also how we have uh, a G Suite. G Suite is free for nonprofit entities, <coughs> so hugely helpful. Um, so what we do we set up a slide deck. We sp and specifically a slide deck where every slide was a blank, a blank slide. None of this crap blank slide. The reason is just like with sharing the intro slide deck, we weren't doing the present mode. We were doing just edit mode. So we didn't want like, you know, uh, pardon. we didn't want people to see like this crap in the background. So it had to be the blank slides. Um, and what I would do is I, for the stream, I would capture, you know, from here to here. So I'm not sure the stream, yeah, stream picked it back up. Perfect. Um, so it would capture this amount so people could see it. 
and Andy was right here, what I would do is I would go into I would go into OBS Ninja and I would remote screen share. Uh, I would select a screen. I actually select the Chrome tab for this because it is a, a, a Chrome tab. So I would select the Chrome tab. I would select the storyboarding photo booth, press share, um, go here. And this is what is seen. I would give this link to Andy so he could see live what we were sharing on the stream. So as I would move through these different slides like so obs ninja would show that and the reason for this is because we could have easily had provided him with the link to the stream the, the output stream that the audience was seeing but it would have been about 20 30 seconds behind so his reaction would have been severely delayed in a way that is not good like it, it would have been very unfriendly and not friendly to him unfriendly to the audience so this is a way to let him see exactly what was being seen live like certainly we could have showed him the other option we could have done is instead of doing this methodology, we could have just shared him the link to this photo, to this deck. And he could have just said like, oh, I'm looking at like, oh, the second one. So I could just, I could have just kept up with him. But um, we decided to go the option where I was sort of running the the ship for moving. Because I was already moving between different scenes. Like, oh, if Andy was like talking more, I would go here. If he was in his workspace, I would go back here. Like I would sort of shift back and forth as as the stream would go on so it kind of made sense for me also to run the photo booth um at least visual so he would see what i was doing in the background <laughs> um shelly and jordan stillman um shelly power and jordan stillman uh who were sort of on almost every call J jordan was basically my shadow number two um doing a lot of the back end stuff like you know chatting with people in the stream updating information in the stream you know, doing all that stuff that I, I just didn't have the, the the time and mental energy to handle during during the live production. And she was the one pulling from Airtable and throwing it into the into the 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 deck. So it was updated for me as I as I moved Andy through it. So um it was definitely a team production. I could not have done it alone. It would no have nowhere been nowhere as smooth without at least one other other mice person who was like on the ball with me during the call during during the workshop. Um, but yeah, that was how it worked and it worked really, really well. It's something we sort of figured out right before the first workshop with John Chad and we sort of kept perfecting the methodology as we went. Um, now lastly, <laughs> I want to show you Iron Cartoonist, which again, would have been so much easier had I known that window capture worked. Um, oh, let's go to Iron Cartoonist. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. So Iron Cartoonist, uh, this is, as I'm just going to expand this up a little bit um as you can see there were a bunch of scenes here um and i'll walk you through what we chose to do and why we did, chose to do it i'm gonna take another drink pardon me oh, stay hydrated um so it started like normal we had the in the background in the in the image no audio no video then the mice intro there's my face hello it's me again this is because display capture so Shelly was introducing it. Zach Gialongo is the originator and uh, MC host of Iron Cartoonist. And I was his like tag along host. I have been for a few years at Mice. So it made sense for me to join in. And then here would have been like the slide deck as normal. So like we would walk through the slides, blah, blah. Um, and then we had the fake intro, <laughs> which was um, here. We had uh, the slide deck yet again. And then it was Zach myself and then the artists we <laughs> we last minute at through this joke in where it was andy brunton who does that book owly and abby howard who's done a bunch of amazing books um and she's local-ish and uh it was the third artist was erica henderson who is you know a longtime friend of mice she lives in the Somerville area you know known for uh squirrel girl and um and assassination and a uh, dracula motherfucker as of lately um but we, when she showed up on the stream, because we encouraged like costumes or like a, you know, like a bit, um, it's kind of like wrestling, but with artists, um, where they don't have to touch each other, because that's not safe right now. Don't do that. Um, I'm, I need to forget, I keep forgetting to hunch and say hello, hello. Um, so I'm like really low right now. You can't really see, but I'm like ah. Um, and Erica showed up with like the green face mask and like curlers and like in a, in a, you know, a nightgown, not a nightgown, no, like a, 
like a robe and you know like looking like what's going on we're like this is great this is a great bit we're gonna make it so we invited bill watterson and then last minute he bailed on us so i like made a fake phone call for erica and it was erica and um and she she showed up like you know she was off she purposely stayed off screen and then like as we introduced she like walked in with like a glass of wine and some chips and like her in her in her green face mask <laughs> she's like acting super pissed it was great it, it was a really fun bit really enjoyable um and this was the, the further introduction and then as we introduced one we had like their names and stuff so erica no surrender abby stabby howard and andy he lives in georgia so creech from the peach um was the best one we could figure out um so they would do their introductions and he was <laughs> andy was wearing a horrible like uh what was it, it wasn't swamp thing it was um creature from the black lagoon i think like head mask which she could not like see in barely breathe in, and we could not hear him so they were for a little bit um and as you can see like these these sources are getting longer and longer uh this is a scary one so all artists um so here <laughs> was um a whole bunch a whole mess of stuff um reshuffle these so i can see everything as i'm talking yeah so here's a whole mess of stuff oh geez a whole mess of stuff here essentially what we had here is we had a zoom video which could have been a window capture i'm learning i'm learning uh, instead of a display capture of zach giolongo and myself and then one for each artist um and then for all three of them we use obs ninja obviously the streams are no longer active because they were using their phones and i would hope that they haven't kept it open this whole time because it's been four days now um overlaid and then like their names as well so there's quite a lot of stuff going on as you can also see we had the computer sound and also my microphone because i was actively speaking during this work during iron cartoonist then we had views for each individual artist where we had you know andy's video and then andy's workspace and then like little workspace teasers so we could see at the very least what the other people were working on of uh, erica and abby and then zach and i and then we had that for everybody and then <laughs> um since we, we were doing for this was the second round of iron cartoonist we, um, and you just seem like all weird, like, Mon de Dion, Picasso, nonsense style images of me. This is great. I love this. Um, since this is round two, the idea was at, at the end of this, we had the champion of champions, the championship of champions, um, where the round two winner would face off against a round one winner who was Kara Bean. Um, Kara, mean green machine, a uh, green, mean green bean machine bean. Um, her, her nickname kept getting longer and longer. It was great. Um, and uh, I, you know, had pre-built some stuff. Erica ended up winning the, first, the second round, so it's her versus Kara. I had pre-built some of the stuff where, like, I already built Zach and Zach, well, me and Zach, and then Kara's side. Kara was already on the call, by the way. She just stuck around for, like, two hours, which was really helpful, frankly. And then I had her version, so it's, like, her and her, her workspace and Erica down here and Zach and I. Up, I didn't know who would win, so I couldn't fully build out this these scenes. There was some editing that needed to happen, and um, so first I needed time. I needed to give myself like five ten minutes. So I built a buffer. Now, if you watch mice at all, you you'll recognize this. Essentially, what I did was, uh, we did this thing called the Creator Showcase, which um was a lot of work from pretty much everybody, but really, really lovely. Essentially, Mice is a platform that sells comics. Um, that's sort of our main goal, is like get people excited about comics, then get them to buy them. Um, get them to buy them from people. So we realized pretty early on that that was going to be the biggest challenge. Like, we could do programming, we could do workshops. That's like, you know, that's equitable in a way that Mice kind of isn't. Like, people all around the world can watch it live and ask questions, where Mice is, you kind of have to be there. And we know that going in, we've done, we've taken steps to like record our panels, blah, 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 but like this was more equitable. But for the buying part, we knew this was going to be a huge challenge. We knew that getting folks to buy comics from mice people was going to be really challenging online. So what we did was we ran our mini grants, which again was already in a weird situation um, because we weren't running mini grants specifically for mice um exhibitors we weren't from anybody so we were starting at a weird at a, a different we, we changed the the order of operations um so what we do is we reach out to all of them who won so 30 people who won and we also had about 30 more people who were honorable mentions people who we really liked that we wanted to promote 
um, we could they could, didn't quite make it into um, into the mini. So I reached out to them all. I was like, "Hey, would you be cool with uh, with filming a thirty to sixty second ad for your comic with information about you and where to buy it? Um, and we'll stitch a video together that we will play in between our programming and encourage people to buy those comics um, and create a showcase." So. Uh, we basically structured, so every 2 p.m., um, Saturday and Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, um, on Saturdays, the panels would, would run, and on Sundays, the workshops would run. So at 2 p.m. was the first panel, and at 3 p.m. was the hour-long showcase. Um, and then at 4 p.m. was the second panel or second workshop. And this was really, this was aided by the fact that Crowdcast lets you build, um, right, let me just pull up Crowdcast and show you. So whoop, let's go into sharing that. Let's go into the actual dashboard. So here's what it looks like on our end. So let's go over here. Crowdcast lets you build multiple sessions within an event. So we had third one for animation, which is at two o'clock, you know, east uh, Eastern time, and then the showcase. And what it allowed a host to do was, when this one was ending, I could start this one, and when that stream started, because all these were streamed into Crowdcast, I could pull the audience from this one into this one, um, which meant a lot of people left. That's okay. Um, it meant that we can sort of can have a contiguous flow of audience um, and make it so they didn't have to keep clicking into each session. They could just sort of stick around. Not everyone did, but it was it, it made it it made it, it it was the choice we wanted to make. We wanted to make it so we could pull people into our creator showcase and they could watch it and then, you know, hang around into the next session and maybe like grab some food, whatever. Like we, we tried to make it as easy as possible. Like there was no browser refreshing involved, except occasionally sometimes crowdcast did need you to refresh, but you didn't need to go. You didn't need to go click on another link. It just would ideally just start. And that was the sort of plan we were going. Um, this is all to say that I had to build an intro because I realized if I just start the stream and go, um, the timing was so tight on making sure people joined it and then the stream started right um, that I wasn't sure if I if I just started them with the with the videos of people's ads, we might miss a couple just because of the, the delay and people getting in and stuff like that. So like, OK, I'm going to build an intro. And I basically I found footage from last year that myself and Jason Viola took. Jason is one of our staff. Um, he does mostly um promotions and um uh sponsorships usually important this year oh my god sponsorships were key for this year to working correctly um but he took a bunch of footage as a die um i basically put like a yellow overlay on it figured out found out how to do a countdown in premiere and then just made a quick video so this was a 10 minute video i had which i've taken five of to explain why i even had it but then i was like oh crap how do i edit a scene in obs while it's streaming because the idea is if i go from here to here this is a, the stream sees that like that that happens like how do i have this video play and then edit this scene at the same time there's like there's a trick for that it's not a trick it's a setting in obs it's called studio mode it's right here i click that what it does is it keeps this scene running and I can go over here and start putting shit together, which is exactly what I did. And it worked. It worked really, really well. Um, Iron Cartoonist, like this was the most complicated thing I was worried about because Iron Cartoonist is already complicated. And I had to add this last part where I had to like in, the, in 10 minutes, like quickly put this stuff together and make sure everyone was set. That went really, really well. The, the goof, <laughs> which was entirely my fault, happened at the end. So... My flow for ending a, um, a program was basically we would do our outro. Oh, hold on, let me get out of studio mode. We would do our outro. It was just Shelly, and it was would have been an image here um, of Iron Cartoonist. And Shelly would have done the in outro. And then I would have clicked on the mice image, like this top one, which is just the image, no video, no audio, nothing being sent live. And that meant we could keep talking on the call and like talk to each other and sort of, you know, end things and, and talk it out and sort of uh, come down from this high. Cause iron cartoonist is really 
exciting and ridiculous and and all this other stuff um come down from this high uh because it's super ridiculous and super exciting and all this other stuff and <laughs> i accidentally clicked on this one i clicked on mice intro instead of mice image and for about 40 seconds we stayed alive <laughs> We didn't say anything. We, we we cussed a couple times, which we were not. We didn't feel so great about because we've been really good about not doing that. Um, but it was all self congratulatory and like, whoa, that was great. Oh wow, wow, like that was so much fun. And like you know, I was I was telling Abby because Abby after <laughs> we uh, it was just like some funny stuff Abby did in the Zoom call, but the audience couldn't see um, because uh, since she didn't win, she wasn't captured in the last sections. But you know, she did some funny stuff that was really 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 great. And sort of messed me up during during one of the live parts, which was very funny. Um, we were still live about forty seconds, and I moved to that. And then I actually moved to this because I'm like, that, that's the perfect time to use it. Um, it went over really well and stuff like that. That was really our only major ga gaff. Um, and I, I do I do feel bad about it, but it is what happens um, sometimes. And if any programming item had that happen, Iron Cartoonist was the best one. Like, thank goodness it didn't happen in the John Lewis panel. That would have been really inappropriate um, and not funny. Um, although it was an excellent panel, don't get me wrong. It was a really delightful panel, but it was much more uh, like an emotionally driven, you know, panel, you know, discussion. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have been as funny or like as enjoyable if, if this, if this mess up happened then it, it happened in Iron Cartoonist makes a lot is thematically fine, not good, but it was, it was funny. Um, so that, that is how we did it. Um, a couple small things I want to show you at the end of this little tricks and tools and settings, um, that I found really helpful. So one is right here is multi view. So, um, multi view, what it basically does is it gives you bloop, 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 a view into what every scene looks like. So I basically, what this allowed me to do is I could have this, have this window on a different screen um and move and like it would live move between the scenes for me as i clicked on them even if my obs window like this window was like obscured by like a like a browser window or something yeah I'll leave it. so if i had this open for some reason i could have the multi view this window in a different screen and still step between the scenes as needed um which was hugely helpful um, because if I was running the, the introduction deck like this, like when, when we were going live, actually, let me update this correctly. Right. Election. It's cool. Boop, boop. So when I was, let's say. So let's say I had this open this deck open so I could move between the slides as, you know, it was in the introduction, I could have this, this set up this way, although this window would be on a different display and say, Ed, like three, two, one, Ed is live. And then just be ready to go straight to the deck. Like I didn't have to move windows around. I didn't have to change which window was on top of my display. I could just move between them easily. This is super helpful. I love this. Um, another really helpful one, because I'd say it's go back to Iron Cartoonist. I could live see everything that was happening. Um, and I was sort of emceeing and uh, commentating live. Uh, pardon me. Going for over an hour. Jesus. This is what I choose to do with my day off. Good job, Zach. Um... I needed Zach Giolongo to see what was live so he could react to it and commentate with me. I'm like, okay, that's maybe tough. You can do an OBS Ninja. Well, what's the best way to do it? I could OBS Ninja just this whole window. That's not very fun because then he gets like, he gets a small view of what this looks like. He's he's seeing all the back end stuff, which isn't bad, but it's not optimal. He needs to see this, the biggest. You click on this and get a windowed projector preview. And there it is. That's the preview. It's small now, but now it's big. So what I would do is I would make this big. 
big. I make it big. Um, and then I would OBS Ninja capture this, send him the link, and he got basically a you know quarter second, ten millisecond delayed view of exactly what I was showing the stream. So he could live commentate no problem and see what I was showing to everybody as I was showing it to them. Um, very similar to what we did with the workshop facilitators for um, the photo booth where they could see audience sent in um, example art of the things they had just taught them. But for Zach, running on cartoonist, this was hugely beneficial to allow him to live uh, view everything that was happening so we could seamlessly respond to things. Now, again, this is a lot of weird stuff. Like, I'm showing you a lot of a lot of shit. Um, but what I'm sort of showing you is this is the same foundational tools. Like, everything on Cartoonist is doing is the same thing we were doing in these workshops. Like, you know, one-third the number of scenes, one-third the number of, of captures. Same idea. We are capturing live footage of both calls and like in Zoom calls or Google Meet or Discord or whatever, and then live captures of someone's workspace or their uh, display, um, or or their like, pardon me, or their like, you know, virtual display, like their their Photoshop and stuff like that, and stitching it together. That's all we were doing, um, and we were just you know lucky enough to be working with a working on a platform that easily accepted RTPM again, um, what OBS can output to streams. Uh, things and let me get into the settings a little bit. So over here are settings. Uh, there's a whole lot of them, but you really can ignore the majority of them. The ones that I found super useful, and also the ones that ended up being only doable because of the kind of computer I have. So let me just show you really quickly. Um, if I go over here, this is the kind of computer I have. I have a Ryzen 7 3800X octa core. So I have eight physical CPU cores, which are all which have two virtualized cores. So I have 16 cores to work with, log logical processors. You can see eight cores, 16 processors. That's a lot of, oh, that's a lot of kick. Like this is a computer made for high-end gaming. You get a lot of like oomph from this, which is what you need when you're running a Zoom call and a bunch of browser captures and a live stream or two at the same time. Um, so this was really, really useful. Memory, 32 gigs of memory. As you can see, just, just by default, I'm using 12, which is kind of a false thing. I'm not gonna get into how memory allocation works in Windows, but essentially, you know, I needed a lot of system memory to run all these things all at the same time. You can get away with doing all the stuff on a weaker computer, but you have to be just much smarter about how you're handling stuff. Like I could have a bunch of other shit open and it wasn't a problem. Uh, lastly, like next graphics card, I have a 1080, it's not the fastest thing anymore, but it's still pretty beefy. Um, and it, you know, I'm going to be upgrading at some point, but the, the important thing is here, this is a, a, a fairly pricey, strong graphics card. It's, it's, you know, it takes up a lot of power. It needs a lot of power. It gives you a lot of options. And this was really helpful when running a Zoom call and OBS at the same time and outputting at the, the quality that we did. And that's the next thing is network. So you can't do this on wireless. You just can't. Maybe in the future you can. I do not recommend it. Um, I wouldn't even recommend doing any video calls on wireless for a variety of reasons. I know everyone does. It's totally fine. It's how it goes. Zoom and every, every other one of them is, is optimized to allow for it. You're going to run into problems no matter what, no matter how good your wireless connection is at some point. Physical connection, Ethernet connection is the way to go. And that is one of the reasons why I was able to do it. I control, quote, quote unquote, my network connection at home. Like I set it up. I'm the one who bought all the hardware. I care about it. So, because part of my day job is I, I do IT for a design studio. I have to have a robust network to to help upload stuff and manage files and other kinds of crap. Like I need to have that. So realistically it made sense for me to do the, to, to produce all this stuff. Um, so the thing you can't really see here is this is just a very basic usage when we're streaming. So I'm going to go to the stream here. So this is, this is where you would set. I'll get back to that. This is output. When I was streaming, I was streaming, this is well beyond what Twitch recommends. I was streaming at 8,000 kilobytes per second. And that is 
eight megabytes. So I, you have to find out what your upload speed, because this is specifically upload. This has nothing to do with your download speed. And if you're living like me, which is living in a place that's only supported by like Xfinity um, cable, um, your upload is significantly lower than your download. And that is by design. So most plans, if you're getting like a 100 or 200 down, you're probably only getting 10 or 20 up. And if you're uploading at 800 kilobytes, you're using up eight tenths or four fifths or, you know, two fifths at, you know, eight out of 20 of your entire upload capacity. And that's not counting like polling things that your computer is doing. That's not counting the zoom call. That's not counting your, like your roommates may be doing stuff. Like I have 40 up and there, even there were a couple of times where I dropped frames because, you know, my roommates were playing games or on video calls and they're welcome to do that. I'm not going to make them stop. I was producing for eight hours a day. Like I'm not going to ask them to stop doing that for the whole weekend. God, no. So I, you have to accommodate for that. Um, you can get away with lower, um, but you need to change some of your settings. I purposely went for high quality settings because we had a lot of text. We had a lot of audio. We needed to make sure those things sounded and looked good. So my bit rate was high for audio. It was the max 3200, uh, 320. That's the highest you can go. Um, and it would have been actually hardware encoding, but it, the last version of OBS that I was using didn't had a problem with that. Um, the next thing is video settings. So this is where you set your canvas and your output. Normally when you're, when you're, when you're doing this, you would set your canvas to 1080 and your output to something smaller. Um, this, especially for games, there's optimization stuff for Twitch where you want it to be like 960 by something, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you can put in downscale filters. So like, you know, it looks 90% as good as it does, but like it really captures all the information you want. Good for games, not good for what we were doing. We wanted everything to look crisp, especially with all the text. It wasn't a ton of moving stuff. It was a lot of static images and talking. So we used the most, the, the least, we used the best sharpness filter we could, which, you know, need a higher bit rate for. That was, that was the, that was the thing. And then we wanted 60 FPS. Um, not the biggest deal ultimately because Zoom doesn't send a 60 FPS. And like, you know, most of the things weren't sending up 60, 60 FPS, but we decided to do 60. Well, I decided to do 60 because of recording. Uh, if we wanted to, you know, pull these files and then cut them into different things and stuff like that. So many other uh, video sources we pulling from were 60. That it just made sense to stream at 60 so we could recapture and record at 60. Um, but yeah. This, these, this is, this is really important. Um, I would look up, there are, are all, there are all kinds of different calculators online of like what works for you. And these are settings I chose. I chose kind of ridiculous settings on purpose. Um, you don't, and also because Crowdcast can accept this high, like Twitch won't even accept past a certain amount for the most part, or it'll downscale on purpose and like chunk because it's trying to encode way too much data than it's a lot allotting for your account and cause problems. So you want to sort of optimize it to the amount that it's expecting from you. So it doesn't have to do any harder work for you. Um, I think for YouTube, you usually want to do like 400, 4,000 or 5,000 for Facebook. I'm not sure. I think you can go pretty higher. Um, but Crowdcast kind of didn't have a limit. So we, we sent it 8,000 and it, it seemed to work fine and it was necessary. Um, and lastly, this is where you put your stream information. If you were saying to Twitch, you just need, you can connect account, like, like OBS has been around for so long. It no, it's like connected to all this stuff. So you can actually like connect your account by logging in to OBS, or you can grab your stream key. If you send to YouTube, it knows exactly how to handle this. Like it's got all the information. If you're going to Facebook, you can connect to your account or set up a stream key through Facebook. Again, it knows what it's, it's restream. Sorry. Facebook live, same idea. It knows what server, it knows the stream key, it knows what it's doing. It's figured it all out. We were custom. So when we started an event on, uh, when we basically went, went live or like started to get, um, did the pre setup to go live with all of our events, um, Crowdcast would launch an RTPM studio engine. That's like a, basically on their servers. It would let the event know that it's, uh, let, let the RTPM server know that, oh, this event is going to be using RTPM. We're going to launch an instance for you. And it would generate a server 
ID and a stream key for me. So this stuff I can show you, it doesn't really matter. It's already dead now because we've run the event. So now I plug this in, press OK, start streaming. And as soon as I start streaming, the event starts. Oh, as soon as the, uh, the stream engine on Crowdcast recognized that I sent a stream, the stream, the event started. So that's sort of how the methodology worked. That's kind of everything. It's a lot of information. Um, I'm going to go through and like make those little chapters in YouTube so people can sort of see how this was done. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to post this as is. I might do a little cutting here and there. I, I filmed a little video intro ahead of time. And I'll film a little, I don't film a little outro or whatever. I don't give a shit. Um, I'll just do the outro here. So essentially, that's how we did the production for mice. It's, it, it's pretty dirty in that um, there's, a, there's not a lot of automation built into it. So a lot of it was just on me to make sure that it looked good. And I would often run um, like whatever I would like to. Sometimes I would just like take a picture of like the base setup I made of like where things are and how big they were and send it to Shelly. And Shelly's like, oh, could you bump this down and add it over? Like I'll just text it to her um, because she, you know, again, she is the, the owner of the visual like voice of mice, like how it looks to people. She's been the owner of that for 10 years. Of course, I'm going to run this stuff by her and make sure it looks the way she expects it to and the way she wants it. Um, but yeah, I wanted to share this because I learned, I, I've been, I've been interested in live streaming and like virtual production like this for a long time. Like I've always been really impressed by like video game streamers or uh, esports like events where especially on like fully online ones where they you know basically a guy is doing what I'm doing by capturing all the stuff and desperately trying to make it look good and make sure it looks professional and stuff and it's really fascinating. Um, I especially always have loved the games done quick events. Um, obviously the in person streaming stuff is like absolutely bonkers, but I've been really impressed with their ability to handle. Um, they've done like two or three majorly huge events. Um, like they've done a full summer games done quick, like week long event all online out of like basically out of people's homes. And it was been really, really well. Like, you know, obviously they had some technical issues here and there, but nowhere near the number one would expect considering how many moving parts there were. So I was deeply impressed by that. And I really want to learn how they did it. I don't think I got close to how they did it at all. I have some ideas. I'd love to speak to them about it, frankly. Um, but it's something I've always been interested in. And I, and I realized that essentially everything I showed you is free. Um, except for the computer hardware part, but that's for the production, like the live big production. If you want to just stream your shit, like put set up a phone or webcam over your, over your workspace or just grab Photoshop. You don't need the, the hardware that I I'm running. You don't, you need like a decently good computer that can run Photoshop um, and a good internet connection. That's, that's the key. You need a good internet connection or at least physically plug into your internet connection. That's the big one. Um, you can, you can tweak, you can tweak down OBS to run pretty slim, but you know, it's going to affect your, the, the output ultimately, or you can just record and upload to YouTube to set your upload overnight and go to bed and your upload should be done in the morning. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it seems like a lot, but I learned all this. I like, I, I've streamed like, you know, half a dozen times in the past. I basically just loading in my mic and my game and just calling it, calling it, a day, calling it for a day. I learned all this stuff in a matter of weeks before mice kicked off. <laughs> so, and I, I, I did a lot of learning in the process, um, as we encountered small issues or problems or things we thought would be nicer. So you can learn this shit too. It's not as hard as you think. Um, and I really recommend it because I think we're going to be, uh, stuck at home for longer than we'd like. And I personally find, even though it's a very one way thing and it's like me in my room running all this, I found a lot of connection and joy and, um, satisfaction out of learning this stuff and trying to make a good production happen that I, I recommend other people try it um, and ask me questions like learn from me and I'll hopefully learn from you too. Uh, please. I would love to be able to help you and I would love to learn from you as well. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Um, a lot of people when they were on the, on the calls and stuff, like we got a lot of positive feedback, like, wow, this is like some of the best production 
we've seen for an event like this, um, which I'm really grateful for. And a lot of people were like, Zach, you should, at least some people were, some people were like, Zach, you should, you know, you know, set up a Patreon or set up a coffee to, and t- teach people how to do this. Like, I, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm just going to put this out in the world and then answer people's questions because that's what I like to do. Um, and I, you know, there's arguments for you know, devaluing your stuff like that. Like, I mean, I can make a salary for my day job. I don't, and I, this is also going to benefit them too. I don't need to make money. What I do ask though, is if you're impressed by this and you feel like you really learned something, um, and you'd like, uh, to support anything and because of that, donate the mice. I've been working on mice for six years now. I, I love it. Um, so, so much. And I'm so happy we were able to put together something that was special for this year in, in such a, such a difficult time, uh, for everybody. Uh, we got so much feedback that people were really excited about it. We got a lot of feedback that people who normally can't make it, um, for one reason or another, either, uh, you know, physical disability or physical location, or the fact that their, their daughter participates in the regatta, which is the one annual Boston event that overlaps with mice every single year. Um, that they can make it and that's really delightful i i i really really that means a lot to me and we will probably try to continue virtual production as some on some level as part of all mice events going forward um, uh, to, to a degree so we're gonna keep doing this on some level because partially because i want to i really like it so don't pay me i don't want your money um uh, but if you want to give money to something i'll give it to mice tax deductible and it makes means we can do more more of what we do next year even if, even if it's like a hybrid thing because it maybe it'll be safe to do a hybrid thing okay that's enough for me um again this was my name's zach um i've been working on the massachusetts independent comics expo since 2015 um and because i'm an it professional i was able to produce the month of mice um and this was a whole ass guide of how to do of how I did it. Um, seriously though, like find me on Twitter or you know find my email. It's all going to be linked. Um, and ask me questions, and I will do my damnedest to answer them, best I can. Um, and if you learn something that makes my life easier, tell me. I'd appreciate it <laughs> so much. Uh, thank you so much, and stay well.